It's that time of year again. The start of the baseball season and basketball's home stretch. Goodyear knows that performance is everything, whether it's on the road or on the quarter field. So when it comes to choosing tires, let Goodyear.com help you choose what's best. Goodyear, more driven. Nothing real. No, no, this is, yes. <laughs> My mind is not in analytics. No, no. <laughs> yeah, all right, ready? Yeah, all right, we're here with the lovely, talented, Turner, host extraordinaire, Roz Goldenwood. Hey, what's up, Roz? What's up, I mean? Roz, of course, <laughs> was once upon a time the sideline reporter for the Golden State Warriors, and she went off to Greener Pastures. What's it feel like to be here? I mean, this, you, last year you, you do the same thing, though, right? So <laughs> what's it feel like to be on this side and see people that you used to work with and, you know? I'm just so genuinely happy for this Warriors organization, for Dub Nation. You feel proud of them when you see them yeah. get there. I think when you're within the organization, you're kind of like, <gasps> and now from the outside looking in, you're just happy for a team that has uh, done excellent things. What's going to be your biggest memory, your fondest memory from this finals? Um... I mean, I think Steph hitting nine threes. I think Katie's dagger in game three. LeBron having 51. That That's was all exciting. That's not a cigar. That's like a freaking. Yeah. <laughs> Steph has popcorn and a cigar. And That's not a, that, the cigar is humongous. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So Steph's threes, uh, Katie's dagger. Uh, LeBron's 51 was also pretty impressive. I mean, that was incredible. Yeah. There was a lot of moments. It was, it was a lot of moments for a four-game series. Yeah. What about what's an unheralded thing that, you know, people may not have noticed, wasn't really talked about a lot, but you were like, I see it. Like what? I don't know. I'm asking you. Um, I mean, I think the fashion in this series was exciting. Yeah, you you know, know, the shorts. The shorts with the suit. What uh, do you think about the shorts with the suit? I actually think it, both LeBron and Draymond yeah. did their thing, you know. And what Draymond told me was it's about, like, you're kind of dressed up and you're dressed down at the same time. It's comfortable. You get a little air going up your legs. It's nice. Now, the only outfit that I was a little... Draymond had a pair of pants where one side was like plaid and the other side was plaid. Yeah, that was and I, you know what? And I, I just give them credit for trying new yeah. things. What what's the wildest thing you tried it on as far as fashion wise? But you didn't know, but someone told you not to be hot. I mean, I have to go on air and keep my job game after game. So like, I like as the farthest I go is like I mix in a little like Ankara, like African, you know, fabric and patterns. But um, I always think it's tasteful and, and pretty and beautiful. Roz Gold, thank you very much. It's thank always you. you always got it popping. <laughs> thank you, I mean, good to All see right. you. Good to see you too. Yeah. Um. So to follow up on fashion, I didn't like Katie's sweatsuits. Really? You at the finals, my guy? No, no, I like it on brand. Stay on brand. Well, what's the brand? I don't Nike. care about looking nice. We're here with the uh, NBA Mino Hassan NBA. No, nobody knows why. Um, um, what, what do I call you? He's an NBA uh, commentator. Front NBA commentator. When, when I go on office. SAP, it says okay. Yeah. What, what is it? Well, that's what you call me. I'm right. just saying when I when I go to SAP, that's what it says. My title is, and, and that is uh, that. that's the dulcet tones of Steve Martinez. Thank you, producer extraordinaire of the jump. Yeah, um, we're sitting here courtside after Game Four of the NBA Finals. They are actually sweeping up the court with brooms right now. You it's, can't see. It's it. breaking yeah. news right now. the The Warriors have swept. I'm sure you didn't know this by the time you hear this. Spoiler podcast. alert! Uh, Steph Curry is being interviewed about ten feet away from us right now. Yep, just yeah, he he's, he's got, got a cigar massive, a massive cigar tucked like a I'm Philly. I'm uncomfortable with how big that cigar is. Yeah, but you know, I guess. It, Oh look at look at Marcus Thompson with his elbow patches. Professor Thompson, <laughs> Marcus. This is Marcus what? Thompson? Right. Yeah, I know. Athletic. That's why we're yes, getting, getting out of here. What, what what's the main takeaway that we should take from this series? Man, that uh, you know, you can really do good things 
when you have a reporter like me writing about you. Wow. Well, okay, how do you well, explain the like the 10 years or so before they said a winning championship? I mean, everybody got to grow, you feel me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wasn't LeBron. I ain't boomer. walk on the court. I ain't so walk right, on the court. Right now, this is three out of four. I mean, how long do you see this going on? How many? Is this five? Is it six? I think that's up to Kevin Durant, right? Mm. <laughs> I think as long as he stays. Well, he told Rachel Nichols on the jump exclusively today. Exclusively. That he will be coming back next year. Yeah, next year. So that's four, right? Cause, is that four? I think it might be four. All right, so we can book that. Hold so on. Now we're looking at. So that's four for the group. That would be three. For this Katie. is how I know that Marcus Thompson's bougie. I remember when, way back when, when he used to cl- claim Clay was his brother, <laughs> cousin, <laughs> cousin, cousin, whatever. Clay's still my cousin though. If you were Thompson but, but you and you doing well, well you were my cousin. You don't drop it anymore. You I don't need to. Drop to. It all the time. I don't need to. Like it's yeah. established. They know. If like, you were Thompson and you doing well, we cousins. So if you're tr- not doing Tristan, well. If you're doing well, <laughs> we cousins. When he signed that deal, he was his cousin. Lately, not so much. You know, I think I think this. Here's the thing that I, that I take away from this, especially watching these last couple games. I think the part that's scary for the rest of the league is, I feel like Steph and KD are like becoming a a real duo out there. Just mm-hmm. the way they impact each other, the way they use each other on the court now. It's not like taking turns. It's not like, all right, you go, I go. It's manipulating each other's ability to kind of get off. And to be honest, that's something they hadn't really done yep. to start. And if they start mastering that. They just yeah. figured it out after the second chip here. Yeah, so, right. That's which yeah, crazy, that's right? Like, yeah, we, it was kind of a touch and go there for a little bit in our first two championships. Right. Then our but next those la- yeah, then we really figured it out. So so here, here's my question. There, inevitably, there are going to be changes. This roster will not look the same next year. Um, instead of asking you who's not going to be here, let me ask you, who do you think will be here? What kind of name should we be looking for to be a warrior next year? If you are a big who can score inside. Really? Yeah. They really want, they really want somebody, whether off the bench or to start. Create his own offense. No, inside. no, but just be able to finish off a okay, roll, right? Be able to <laughs> get the ball in the paint. And be like, make one move and get to the rim, like. Got you. So they really need that. If you yeah, can do that, so Clint, Ca- Clint Capella to the Warriors next year. You heard it here first. <laughs> Clint Marcus Capella, yeah. of the Clint Capella's exclusive. a major bag alert. <laughs> damn right. He I is. used to hear the name Nerlens Noel, but I don't know oh, if they wait, still was, like him. Who was Team Nerlens Noel? I don't know. I think Nerlens is like kind of dropped himself off somebody, the list. Oh, a look bit. who we got here. I, I, he can be unlocked. Look, this, this is the the athletic He's corner. Kind of dry. Ethan's kind of dry for somebody yeah, yeah. in the locker room. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit. It's, 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 yo, let me say Did something. Look? I'll say this. I saw them celebrate. It would look really muted. Yeah. It looked like kind of like yeah. perfunctory. Mm-hmm. Look and look who's here. Oh, I feel like I keep. This I don't is, know what we're doing. We're buying time phone. for you, Rachel. Yeah. Oh, I'm supposed to be like me. Oh. <laughs> wow. That's a flex. That was humble. <laughs> Brian went home. Uh, <laughs> I kind of uh, supposed to be trying to get some time with Steph. But All right, well, go ahead, man. Go yeah, ahead. yeah, you see that pack? I ain't getting in Brian's right there. still working. And I'm supposed to find Steve. And oh, you missed Steve. Oh, Steve's, Steve's right here. Steve is a rap, oh, no, man. Not me. I, just, I think it's They're going to be so the, in the background. It's so low like dun 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 da 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 dun dun da 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 and everybody with a little fork and knife eating their steak. Is that supposed to be Vivaldi's four seasons? Yeah, what is that? <laughs> wow. That's, That's a dun, really dun, nice. dun, 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 I don't know. Ooh. I don't know if it'll be that tame because Nick Young is on the team. That's and I just true. saw Nick Young, and he is versus, lit. Versus the first one. But can like one man Carmen, turn up? The, the one man turn up. I don't know. I think if, if Nick Young turn up, it might be a little contagious. You know Jordan okay, Bell's so been waiting for the cue. Nick. Waiting for permission. Nick, Nick Young <laughs> was, uh, he was yelling in the locker room that, you know, this is for my haters. I'm no oh, longer, yeah. I'm no longer Swaggy P anymore. I'm Swag Champ. You know, I'm Nick no, Young said, y'all can't tell him nothing no more. I've been as if somebody could tell him something before. I've been hated on. I've been snitched on. Oh, he, he said that. Yeah, he did that. He, he said, said I've been snitched on. Been snitched Yo, on. The, the, the post-championship on, alcoholic stupor that turns into a true serum angry. is hilarious. I'm trying angry. to figure out. These dudes are like drink champs, right? Like, these dudes get down. They drink a lot. How they lit off some champagne in a locker room? Because it's man. like it dripped off your brow, and all of a sudden you drunk. High off life, man. It's another level of <laughs> right. It's like, it's I'm just it's like, like I mean, really? Have you drank that much that you lit? <laughs> They're not got an Ace of Spades back there, do they? Yeah, with it's, Ace of Spades. Armand de Brichac is the champagne of with choice. the light in it. Did they have the lights in it this year? I thought it was Andre. They, they yeah. lit up. <laughs> I it thought they were like drinking that Andre. Chili pepper Andre. that Homer ate is what that champagne looks like. So I asked, I asked, uh, Marcus, 
obviously there are going to be changes to this roster. What kind Trevor of- Reza. Ooh. That's that's a name. Bro, Trevor Reza. Gerald Green? The Warriors, man. That's not fair. Nah. <laughs> Just messing with you. <laughs> I don't think they want Gerald Green again. They don't want Gerald Too Green. Too much Phoenix history on that set. They don't want Gerald Green. They didn't want Jarrell Eddy because he reminded them of Gerald Green. Oh, yeah. I got a name for you. I got a name for you. Jamal Crawford. Ooh. Yeah, I thought yeah. about that one. I think they're going the other way in general, which is... Uh, Younger? They want young. No, but you can't go too young. That, that's what they want to do. You got to have someone. You, who, I mean, you have six spots open, so you could get young and get a veteran. I know they. I know they want a guy who can come off the bench and get a bucket. Jamal Crawford. It makes a lot of sense, right? Ryan Winhurst. Is this the Warriors portion of the podcast? I mean, this is the everything I mean, podcast. They did win the championship. Yeah. Oh, if you're in charge, although they barely be. seem to. Get, <laughs> well, what was that supposed to be? I mean? think there's more interest in what Brian has to say. Regarding the immediate aftermath, of so this thing I don't know. If this hey, is remember when we used to be here? Brian, like, and this game didn't matter. I would come to Warriors games on Tuesday nights. The arena was full. Yeah, it was lit. It was like it was two, a great time it was, out. It was like Tuesday night in in uh, Golden State. They they weren't on TV. They started at seven o'clock local. They nobody cared. <laughs> nobody cared. <laughs> We've come a long way, Brian. Yeah. Um, so Brian, I've heard. Whispers that LeBron had a hand injury that was undisclosed. Yeah, we know, we knew that there was something going on for the last few days, but understandably, uh, they were not letting us know. Right, uh, he, guys, he has a broken hand. Now, it's not like fractured to the point where like he needed to have pins put in it, but he he cracked it. Which hand? Now, did that Draymond foul like exacerbate it a little bit? I don't know, man. He, he it looked like he was really here's, grabbing here's after the that. Thing. You know how they? I know there's only one year left in Oracle. You know how they have the the wall where the where Dirk threw the yeah, yeah. through the trash can and done to the wall. Somebody's better get in that into that locker room and save that whiteboard that he punched, and maybe immortalize that sucker too. Oh wow! Um, you know he he. <laughs> what do you put over it? A strength in numbers T-shirt though. It's not, <laughs> it's not as cool as we believe. Yeah, I know. It also wasn't seen on TV. Uh, I guess Jr. is lucky that he didn't punch Jr. Um, Night's young. The night is young. And on that right. note, I'm out. Marcus Thompson. Oh, you too? Oh, look at these guys. I um, mean, uh, where, does, where does LeBron punching a blackboard and hurting his hand and limiting himself for the rest of the finals fit in his career legacy there? I, I don't know. I don't think it's a good look. I, I, I imagine Skip Bayless will have something to say about it, <laughs> not being able to control his emotions. And <laughs> No, that's um, not a leader. Michael Jordan would have never punched – Someone or something <laughs> in a pit of anger. It's it's not. I mean, it's not a good look. Um, he it's shot, understandable though. Oh, it's understandable, but it's I mean, not. It's not. If he had done it after game two, then I would be like, okay, that that's not bright. But right. after game one, yeah, I definitely see that. Well, I mean, I will say that like that night, the Cavs were so devastated. I wonder. He probably didn't know how bad it was. The swelling was really bad the first night, I guess, and mm-hmm. they couldn't even. <clears throat> they couldn't even get an image. They ended up taking two MRIs. The first MRI didn't give enough of an information, and the second MRI, I think, showed a chipped bone. Um, they said to me that it was a hand contusion, but LeBron said on the podium he's been playing with a broken hand. I mean, right. it's the bones. The bones got some damage to it, but okay. he did play. I mean, it wasn't like he wasn't able to play. Um, it wasn't like it determined the series, but he wasn't the same player after game he one. He was not capable of putting forth the superhuman effort that we saw in game one, that we saw in game seven against Boston, and so on and so forth. So the question, Brian, that people have been bothering me with for basically the entire series is, where is he going to go? They, they, they don't even bother you with that? No one's been bothering me with that. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um if if we had to so let's let's start this you got a one side is at Cleveland the other side is the field are you betting on the field or are you betting on him staying in Cleveland here's the best way i can say this you'll by the way i've fashioned this you'll not know i've answered it before mm-hmm. if i had to bet whether or not he would be in cleveland next year i would bet he would be elsewhere okay but if i had to bet which team had the best chance to get him i would say it was the cavs as far as just so yeah so if we have a list of te- five teams or whatever. Yeah, like I guess if I was putting percentage, the Cavs yeah. would get like, you know, percent. 29% chance. Yeah. And the Sixers would have 24% chance. You know, I, I don't you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, it's no. just a way to answer the question right. artfully, uh, which is another way of saying I don't know. You don't know. No um, one knows. 
That's the thing. You Does know, they, he know? Do you think he knows? No, I don't. You think? I, 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 I think he's always thought about it. Right. You know, there's a lot of permutations that could happen. Remember, Chris Paul's a free agent. Right. You know, he doesn't have to resign in Houston. I right. expect him to. Right. But, you know, the league changes. We're now in the period where, the, where we're going to go through a stretch here where the league is going to change every day. Right. You know, we still have coaching openings that are unfilled. We still have... Dra- I mean, last year, Jimmy Butler got traded on draft night, and the right. Cavs came within a whisker getting Paul George. I mean, so stuff happens. Let, let me ask you this, then. Bearing that in mind, do you expect it to be a prolonged decision-making period? So I think it's going to be one of two ways. Either he'll pick up his option. He has an option on June 29th. He won't pick it up to stay. It'll if, be to be if, if, the Chris Paul. If, if he stays, he'll right. just do a new deal. To okay. give himself maximum right. flexibility. Um, if he picks it up, it's to do a Chris Paul and right. force a trade. Um, and the Cavs will do business on a trade. Uh, as long as, you know, they're not taking back Ryan Anderson while, before you go to your trade machine. But right. <laughs> they'll do business on a trade. Right. Um, and I think also because Dan Gilbert is somewhat interested in not having a. I mean, Dan wants to point to LeBron and say he has to be traded. He right. has to be out of here. Right. Um, so, so that'll either happen by the end of the month, or I think it could be protracted, and, and he'll do what he did before, which is, you know, go to the Caribbean or whatever and be out of the way. Uh, we're joined by the one, the only Kevin Arnovitz. Uh, let me qu- pose a question to you, gentlemen, that I've posed on the air before. It's so hard to compare this Golden State Warriors team to any other team. Because of difference of eras and difference of styles of play. But there is one team that we can compare them to that played in the same era and same style of play. And it is the 2016 Golden State Warriors. So the difference between a team that sure in identity, deep, defensively elite, killer instinct versus a team very top-heavy, higher ceiling perhaps, but flakiness and effort levels and concentration levels and and not terribly deep so if in a magical mystical world we pitted 2016 versus 2018 uh what are your thoughts on that kind of scenario so i have aesthetic biases which is i just love the golden state warriors at 15 and 16 right um i also appreciate that with durant you have the greatest fail safe in the history of sports right Right, it, it, it gives you that in case of emergency, break glass. Uh, the problem with ISO ball with a guy like Duran or Harden, for that matter, is not that it isn't good offense; it's that it is good offense. Right. Also, you bring up a good point: is the complacency a function of oh, we have this ISO guy, or is the complacency by virtue of the fact lack we of, did it before, or or because of lack of serious competition? Right. Right. Um, and, and I don't know. I don't know if you can attribute the complacency to the anatomy of the team, right? Or to the fact that yeah, okay, you know, the ball gets pounded. Right. It's not as uh, you know, it, it, the ball finds energy. There's less energy because right. the ball is moving less. I, I don't know the answer. I mean, I mean, are we of the opinion that the 15-16 team, despite winning a championship, was the despite best? Despite not team? winning a championship, I'm sorry. Yeah. Despite not winning the championship, was the superior team? I. I, I I think of since this since Steve Kerr has gotten there, that was the best. That that's my. Opinion. That was the purest. I mean, and and again, Steph Curry got hurt in Game One or Game Two of that Houston series, slipping on the wet spot. In that game, they looked phenomenal, and I know it was a, you know, they were an eight seed or whatever. Houston wasn't quite what it was this year and what it was even their first year, their first go around, but. The level of basketball execution those guys had, they were flawless. Do you ever think of the butterfly effect of that wet spot? Yeah. I mean, they're sitting here with a what, two-time what finals MVP. the butterfly effect of Chris Paul ripping his hamstring this year? I mean, that's a historic moment in NBA history because yeah. the Rockets would have won this series. You think so? And, um, you know, I, I, I don't know if they would have won six or seven. I would have bet on them winning six or seven. I actually think that the Warriors showed vulnerability this year that they hadn't had. Now, the one thing that they get, they have a chance to remake a little bit of their roster. You know, they clear out their mid-level, and hell, if they get Trevor Ariza, like Chris Haynes said, 
that'd be a real nice addition. Not only because it's a good addition to be weakening their, their rival. Right. That's the main um, thing. And it, uh, and a guy, by the way, in terms of skill and profile, so tailor made for everything they do. Qu- question though about that, because I was thinking about that first. I said, "Wow, that'd be amazing." Then I thought, "Are we doing the Doc Rivers here? Are we looking at Trevor Reza?" And thinking of Trevor Reza from like two years ago, because Trevor Reza at times in these playoffs well, did not look. Sharp. Are you referring to Game Seven? Well, there's, there's a cascading effect if Trevor Reza goes to the Warriors as well. Is Chris Paul going to stay in Houston if he doesn't think that there's a feasible chance that they'll beat the Warriors? Is a Reza the margin though? I mean, their margin was razor thin as it was already. This was even though they won this in they won the finals in the easiest margin. This was. Their toughest road, and even you know, I think I saw Dream. I wasn't in the Warriors locker room; I was in the Cavs locker room. Boy, that was a blast! The sixth Finals losing locker room I've been in for LeBron. Um, what but, was the mood in there? What do you think? Um, <laughs> was it any different from last year? Let me put it that way. LeBron was sitting in his locker with a towel over his head and headphones on, and he wouldn't look up for anything until his sons came in. And his sons brought a whole bunch of their friends, which I thought was interesting. I'd never seen that before. Right. But if LeBron's if LeBron's family is going to run roughshod over this building, it's going to be right now. <laughs> they actually they actually don't do that. They, they actually right. are very respectful. They don't they don't run the show or anything. Um, but a bunch of his friends came in. I mean, I guess that's when you're going to do it. And he actually kind of brightened up a little bit when he saw his, his sons. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just to think about this, LeBron's son Bryce, who's running around in there, is turning 11 next week. Right. He was born during LeBron's first finals. Like, on an off day in between games three and four, Bryce was born. And now he's running around there about 11 years old. That's just last time he got swept, by the way. Um, so, you know, it was definitely down. I mean, I, there's a strong possibility that, um, that there, there, isn't, there isn't one player on that roster who I say is a guarantee to be back next year. Chetty? He's not a guarantee he could be using a trade. Mm. I mean, I think he's most likely. I think I actually think the I think the I think the number eight pick is the most likely player. Oof, even that on even that one. Even that one. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's I mean Well let, let's say this. Let's say LeBron leaves. Let's say he leaves straight up free agency. There is no trade. There is no opt in, there is no trade. What becomes the Cavs path from that that point is it one of let's start from the beginning or is it an attempt to remain competitive no no they start over so I think they fully make Kevin Love available Um, they fully make Kevin Love available Um, I'll bet they would look for a first round pick in that trade now he has he's on the last year of a deal so they're not going to want to take on money but they'd have to get something back but um Kevin Love would be available. Kyle Korver would be available. There would be suitors for Kyle Korver. I don't know if what they could get for him, but they, you know, he makes eight million bucks. They yeah. could do something. Um, George Hill's a buyout candidate. Yeah, he's got what three million guaranteed. No, he's of- got he's got nineteen million guaranteed, and the third year is only the third year is the one that the partial. He's a buyout candidate. Um, you know, he may be able to secure a mini mid level somewhere. The Cavs could get out of some of that, and they could stretch it, but. Right. The question I have for you is, if LeBron leaves and they do start from scratch, does the Cleveland Cavaliers become a Midwestern, small market uh, team that's going to have to make a go of it that won't be a destination? In other words, do they, do they become an unexceptional, non-tentpole franchise? Do they? Is there any residue or shine that LeBron leaves behind where you know, the Cavs is a brand in the imagination of players and agents is a little place place higher than their market appeal. Well, Dan Gilbert believes that he can build a championship team without LeBron, and I think he is looking forward to trying. I don't think he necessarily wants it to be next year, but I do think Dan Gilbert has, would like to maybe tr- make a run of it. N- you know, I would say he had four years before. They had incredible lottery luck, and they were no closer... <laughs> to making the playoffs and they were the year after LeBron left. Now that was then. This is now. Um, I believe totally Dan Gilbert different. will have a huge influence on who they pick eighth. Can I uh, Can I just say in the background while you guys were discussing the Cavs, there was this large scrum at center court that was 
growing and growing. I couldn't see who it was because the Cavs' court is raised, as Brian has indicated to me when we first got to Cleveland. And it it's cleared like a little NCAA bit. It's regional or something. It's, yeah. Stephen Curry is holding an impromptu, I guess, like media session in the middle of the court is what's going on. And everyone is waiting their turn to talk to the... Uh, by, by the way, completely off topic. You just reminded me with the whole court being raised and everything. Uh, everyone send best wishes to Hubie, Hubie. Brown, who yeah, was absolutely. taken to the hospital tonight. He's fine. I think it's something in his knee. Uh, and he, he was st- he was at the radio table, and he banged his knee, right? Tore a ligament, and was wow, at Eesh. the Cleveland Clinic where he's going to have surgery. surgery I, I assume so. tomorrow. I know there was some stuff on Twitter where people heard that Hubie Brown was taken out on a wheelchair, and people thought. Their imaginations ran wild. He's fine, but he obviously. Do you know why the court is raised? Uh, no, because it's the Metrodome in 1989. Would you say it's raised about maybe two two inches, three inches? Oh God, no! No, You're you're missing this. No, you're missing the second. Oh, oh, Oh. it's it's raised about maybe maybe nine inches, inches, eight to ten inches. Yeah, the building was the design of the building is flawed. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah, Um, the sight line they they got the sight lines wrong. And so the first year that the they put the floor, you know, on the bottom, the people couldn't see right. Brian, there's a really, really awful joke I could make right now. About Cleveland? Make it. No, we, not about Cleveland. When you About this no, story. No, no. Everybody's I, made it. People in Cleveland know what you're talking about, so okay. don't even do it. All right. Um, but, yes, it's a, it's been a flaw. And they're, they're doing like a... Two hundred million dollar renovation to this is starting tomorrow. They're going to start doing stuff. They're not fixing. By the way, that I, aspect. I, I'd like to say though, it really is a lovely arena, and we, you know we did the jump at at the uh, Brown, Brown Stadium, Stadium, and that's a. Lo- I mean, it's a Shout really nice facility. You know, you, uh, Steve, producer Steve, you went to the baseball game. I did. Uh, Progressive feels very nice, minus some midges in the bottom of the seventh. I got out of there. Okay, but. These are three really nice facilities, all in within a square mile of one another. There's a bunch of bars, there's a bunch of restaurants. Is Kevin, he been doing what I think he's doing? I'm, I'm about. To, I'm because bound, he's because you think you're not coming back to Cleveland for years. I don't on think end, we're coming back to Cleveland in a very long time. So, well, I'm coming back many times. Well, but. you are, but you're going well. Okay. <laughs> So, Andrew. Yes? Have you ever hired anyone? No. And I never want to hire anyone. Yeah, I, I don't either. Um, although, let me say that I've always aspired that if I did hire people, I would treat the candidates really well. You know, I wouldn't go dark on them for weeks on end. I wouldn't, like, um, put them in awkward positions when it came to asking for money. One time, my friend, my friend, he's um, he runs a, a media company and he uh, hires people like all the time. And I actually, he had to do three interviews and he did them on speakerphone. And I sat there and listened to him interview somebody, and um, or actually three different people. And I just thought I thought that was fascinating to listen to him interview them and like ask the same people the same questions and. Um, you know, he asked each of them the money question and how, and these were like fresh out of college people that he was trying to hire. And so like, you know, they were just really inexperienced. Not that I'm like Mr. Experience. Wait, did you, they were really, did you tell, tell them that you were listening in? No. So you were no, just is like, that a violation? You're just like s- spying on them. It's like eavesdrop. You're like peeping Brian. No, he knew that I was listening in, but they didn't. No, they didn't. Oh my goodness. But do they have an expectation of privacy in an interview? I I don't know. But I always I always um, aspired to like if I ever did hiring to treat people really well because you know I've been hired for jobs not at ESPN of course I was treated brilliantly at ESPN everything happened really really fast and oh yeah there was never any problem absolutely. right absolutely I mean you know everything was streamlined there was no delay whatsoever all the paperwork was done within five seconds right ESPN is fantastic. Thank you very much. I, I'm glad you had the same experience that I did. Um, there was no waiting around or anything. Never. You know, they they made a decision to hire somebody, and they did it within the next five minutes. So I always, but you know, my previous jobs is what I'm talking about. Oh, those so I guys. Always, just miserable. So I always aspired, you know, to 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 hire um, well if I ever have to do it. 
and um, I kind of feel like if I ever did have to do it, that I would use ZipRecruiter. Now that you you alerted me to an existence of a company called ZipRecruiter, <laughs> what about it? Actually, I think my friend might be able to use it because he he it definitely stresses him out. Like you know, because he's like an executive type, and he's like sort of doing the hiring is sort of like a something that he has to squeeze in like he was the reason that happened is that we were somewhere we were trying to like hang out uh, actually i think we were in vegas and um we were like trying to hang out but he's like well it was like a friday and he's like well i gotta do these interviews and he sort of like sort of had to drag his way through them um maybe he should maybe he should look to zip recruiter because um that'll that'll make it easier for him because they post your job when you have a job they post it on a hundred job boards and you just got to do it one time um and i would think that he would probably like it because 80 percent of employers who post on zip recruiter get a quality candidate in just one day how do you how do you define a quality candidate though uh, I think it is someone that responds. Is it? Is it? Does it work like dating? Like a quality candidate is someone that's just willing to respond, because that's how I would define a quality candidate. On the software, is there a swipe? Is there a swipe left or right that you can do? I mean, I, I have to speak to the to the software engineers as a recruiter to see if there's a swipe, because that seems to be the way to go now. Or you can speak to swipe Justin left, Barrier. Swipe speak a barrier and that that would handle it oh okay he's definitely an expert in that for sure yes. and um i kind of feel like sometimes when you are out to dinner with justin barrier that he's always like peeking at his phone you know just because you know things could change he's looking for qualified job candidates that's right because he is a <laughs> boss now at a, at another media company that we won't name well anyway right now our listeners can post jobs on zip recruiter for free uh, they said free. That doesn't sound like a very good business model, if you ask me. But free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash collective. I think that's good for us if you do that, because that, that means that you listen to the ad here. Um, ZipRecruiter.com slash collective. And you can find out all you need to know, and you can start posting jobs and find great talent and do it in an easy way. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash collective. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Were you telling this story about your friend in air quotes, meaning you like no, had a terrible no, was, experience hiring? Are you sure? Because oftentimes people say my friend, and then it ends up just being them. Asking for a friend? No. No. I mean... Hard to believe that baseball season is here. As fans, we demand a lot from our teams. And a new season means not only hope that our teams will do us proud, but a renewed drive and commitment by players and coaches to start strong and finish strong. Goodyear strives to make tires that do the same, to go further, faster, and longer. They're inspired by those who put in the work and effort needed to succeed. So if you demand superior performances from your team, why not do the same for your tires? When it comes to choosing tires, choose right at Goodyear.com. Goodyear. More driven. Kevin, yes. What kind of impact does LeBron leaving leave in this area? I, I, Brian's a much better person to answer that. Um, I did notice like a disproportionate number of cryotherapy centers here in Cleveland. Like, like they are actually more this Brian in Kevin, immediate Cleveland. But I think this Kevin is a LeBron answer. effect, though. I think like this is a community that is um, that is obsessed that like Le- just by residual association lebron sort of i I would i would attribute some of that to him obviously whoever you the people you talk to you'll get a differing variance of opinions um in my viewpoint their 2016 championship only becomes as a greater accomplishment as it ages and um 
the fact that they were able to get one under these circumstances that they are playing opposite in these four years, a historically great team, is remarkable. I advocate that they take that banner, which is not that big, and they triple it in size because it's worth way more than, than that. And, uh, and I think that th- it's possible that that championship can sort of become like what the 77 championship is in Portland. You know, it's become a 77, they call it the spirit of 77. Well, it's this great source of folklore. Yes. And, um, you know, if Cleveland was smart, which as a municipality it generally is not. Um, uh, I got a long history from Brian the past couple of days there's about how Cleveland is not smart that's right. about the way that they structure well, the Well, I had to, like, take Andrew on an odyssey to find the lake <laughs> because unless you stumble upon the lake in Cleveland, you won't know it's there. I realized that, that you know, that it's... <laughs> put it this way. I realize it's not the Pacific Ocean, okay? But you see the lake goes to the horizon, and in the, and in the summer, the sun sets over it. Right. And there's an opportunity for a beautiful f- lakefront, as there are in Toronto or right. Chicago. Um, but you'd never know in Cleveland. T-I-L. But, today I learned. I used to always think that that Marriott Key Center, you know, have that, have that big lawn right there. Oh, if you just keep walking down that lawn, you hit the stadium. And so today... I was leaving a hotel, and uh, they had a car leaving, and I said, no, 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 I'll walk. It's a wonderful they day. They cars for you, huh? <laughs> As I walked, I realized, no, there are train tracks, there's a highway. That stadium was a lot farther off. You know what's farther off? The lake. Yes. Anyway, they should, they should, do they should take a cue from Portland. And make the 2016 championship like a part of the city. They should. I've advocated for a while now that they should build a LeBron statue in the plaza in between the stadium and the arena. Call LeBron James Plaza. Make the statue of the block. Right. And if you want to get a little burn, put Iguodala's head in it. You know. Yeah. And um, give some place of people to come and celebrate that. In addition to honoring LeBron, I think they should do that yesterday. I. Uh because I, I don't think they're getting one for a while. I was with uh, RJ earlier this week, uh, Richard Jefferson, and I told him the biggest thing that they did, the biggest service that they did to this league was uh, put the idea in everyone's mind that you can have a doubt about the Warriors, right? That if they had lost that series, if we were sitting here and talking about the fourth straight title, all the things that people kind of complain about, boring and predictable and all that, it would be true. The Warriors can go on and win five titles in a row from here on out. But 2016 will always be the, wait a second, remember that one time? Don't, don't, you know. There's enough there to make everyone believe that they've got a chance when probably it's not that big of a chance. I don't know that dynasties, I mean, this is a conversation I've had ten times in the last two weeks. I don't know that dynasties are bad for the NBA. They're great. Uh, you know, for I, every I, sport, for every sport, every by single. Way, and sport. everybody I know who is blame, uh, complaining about predictability has watched every single game. Of course. Um, I, I just think leagues have life cycles, and there are these cycles where the league is really competitive for five, six, seven years, and then there's a period of uh, you know a pax, whatever. The Warriors jumped into that when right. the Heat and Spurs sort of diminished. There was a, a year there. And the Warriors leapt into the four and grabbed it. There, you know, there could, there could be, a, you know, to, to me, you know, a very interesting thing will happen this summer is how many years does Durant sign for? And we talked about this yesterday. I mean, we got to believe it's a one and one in perpetuity. Well, he he is eligible to sign a four year max contract, not the five year, but he can sign the four year. But there's no incentive to do that. Okay, but he can. Yes, yes, he's capable. Okay, of. Um, if he signs for one year. I think 2019, when there's massive amounts of cap space and, and a ton a lo- of guys, a ton of free agents who are really interesting, make it interesting. That would be a huge moment for the Warriors. Do you ever think boredom factors into their decisions? No, that but I think boredom is a results in symptoms that can afflict. restlessness. Well, see, but, but Kevin, that's why my whole thing about the next wave of supporting cast that they bring in here has to be guys who are. Obviously, young enough to extend the window. You're talking about the Warriors now. Yes, the okay. Warriors. But also, old enough to know what it's like. 
right? Do you have you got you, you basically need people with David West kind of well, like knowledge example, of they it. made a tremendous acquisition with Sean Livingston, which yes. they did before they got yep. the title. They need a they, which they signed with the mid level, right? They need a player like that, and I haven't studied the list to see. They, who they need they in. need because here is the thing: Andre Iguodala, Sean Livingston, they've been so instrumental to the success here. They're getting old, man. They're not like they're getting to a point where you can't keep doing that. And Patrick McCaw is a lovely player, and, but there is two things. One is the young guys that they have. I don't think any of them really have the passing acumen that those two guys have as high level passers in this league. High level IQ guys. Those those contracts are going to get could get bad. Yeah, no, absolutely. But then the other thing also is. If you talk about young guys who've been drafted by this organization, that's nice, but they also lack the, I know what it's like on the other side of the tracks. I know what it's like to be in an awful organization. I know what it's like to bang my head against a wall and not be successful. And so now that I'm here and I have an opportunity to do this, balls to the wall. And that will be the fire that lights under the asses, if you will, of the guys who have done it now they three do times. Need, they do need to refresh the roster. They need like they need those guys, but it can't be old guys and it can't be well, young Reese guys that an, don't know Reese anything. Reese is an old guy. Reese is an old guy. That's why Jamal 13. Crawford is a name. Jamal Crawford's an old guy. I think you need. Who's the thirty-one-year-old? Right, a tw- he can make a play off the dribble. Knows how to pass. You know, can shoot a little bit. Player. I mean, the the nice thing about the Warriors, you almost. Uh, I'm under the impression that even if you're in the marginal section of that category, they'll turn you into the yeah. uh, good section of that category. Here's here's the question. I see Jordan Bell getting interviewed on the other side of the court. I saw JaVale McGee sit down on the NBA TV set a few minutes ago. Obviously, Draymond Green, Steph, KD were all out here. At what point do the on-set media say, like, no, we don't need that warrior. It's okay. Da- Damian Jones. Damian Jones. That's that's the Mendoza that's, line. That's the, <laughs> and and by the way, if Damian Jones comes out here right now, guess who's con- guess who's gonna hop on the mic with us? <laughs> Damian Jones. If his contract wasn't onerous, you know who would be like a classic oh. lawyer pickup? Evan Turner. Yes. Yes, if Evan right. Turner Knows, were bought out. Right. If Evan Turner were bought out, that's exactly the kind of guy they need. I've been in crappy teams, I've been in teams that didn't have great chemistry. I, I Dave just, and I just point had guard to have skills a essentially yeah. with negotiation size. over whether we should report that LeBron punched a blackboard or a whiteboard. We we heard both. We initially reported blackboard. They don't, we, there's not a blackboard in America. I was re- say, okay. Yes. Only well, in Amish country. Well, we were told blackboard. Is it like so a one room schoolhouse? Well, I don't have <laughs> a, a photographic memory of that locker room, so there could have been a blackboard. It's an old ass arena. What a board. No, it's <laughs> definitely not. They're not using chalk in there. Okay, well, we just had a negotiation about it. Is there a map massive of a difference between whiteboard and blackboard? He How about the board? In 2018? He punched a wall. It's a board. A bunch of temporary wall. A, 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 a vertical hard surface. Yeah. Um, Did you steal some hats there, Steve? You steal some hats. I don't steal, Mr. Windhorse. These were uh, free. These you know were what, gifts. Um, As you know, we earned you know our way Tracy into the McGrady's stadium today. Guy says, I don't want to out him. I'll just say. <laughs> he says, if it's free, give me three. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he says he's never that's paid a, for a, a shoe being McGrady's guy for the last 20 years. That's a great <laughs> right there. <laughs> uh, all right, are we done here? Almost. There was one more question that I had. I'd love to get a drink. It was, oh, yes, okay. Thanks. <laughs> the one more question that I had was um, we had just got oh, done. Oh, wait, did we talk about who should have gotten MVP? Steph or KD? You know, I, it was funny. Until I looked at the stats, I was like, eh, it can go either way. Have you seen Durant's stats in terms of just percentage? Versus- Durant had a triple-double, sort of a quiet, effective, devastating triple-double tonight. Yeah. Steph was so trash. And, like, I I was leaning towards Steph, but Steph was so who, trash. Do, do we know who the voters were? Seven. Oh, yeah. Ele- there were 11, 7, and 4. Were you seven one of the voters? For us, it no. was Ramona and uh, Rachel Nichols. Do you want me to for, okay. tell you the voters and who they voted for? D- KD. Yeah. Right. And uh, Ramona had Steph. I okay. have it. Steve Ashburner from NBA.com voted for Steph. John Barry, ESPN Radio. Steph, Howard Black, Beecher Report, Durant. Lisa Sue from Tencent, Durant. Mark Medina, who's one of the beat writers for the Warriors, 
from the Bay Area News Group, Durant, Rachel Nichols, Durant, Tim Reynolds from the Associated Press, Curry, Ramona Shelburne, ESPN, Curry, Jeff Van Gundy, ABC, Durant, Joe Varden, Cleveland.com, one of the Cavs beat writers, Durant, Jeff Zilgit, USA Today, Durant, 7-4. to four. There it is. I had another question, but I've completely forgotten, so... After game one, I thought, you know, maybe maybe this is the series where LeBron goes Jerry West, and then he tailed off. Yeah. I actually was thinking about if LeBron had another big game two and they lost, I was thinking about maybe the conversation should start. But he really tailed off. I mean, he had good games. I mean, he had a 33-point triple-double in game three. That's what I'm saying. As we go forward with this hand injury, the hand injury obviously affected his shooting, but let's not make it seem like he was dragging it up and down the court. Yeah. I mean, he had a 33-point trouble, double-double. Will we, will we, it's, I mean, again, it's, this is the kind of lame legacy talk that people talk about, but how will we remember LeBron James' time in Cleveland? I mean, per there, your other there, there's, last there's two, conversation, there's, 2016 is everything. There's two ways you can do it. One is they had arguably top three player of all time for 11 years and they have one banner Kobe played for 20 years got 5 Duncan played for what 41 years yeah got 5 Shaq Shaq got 5 um 4 right sorry um well 3 with one organization though we're talking about Uh, that's 11 years one title that's not it's not highly efficient the other way you could say it is he won one of the greatest championships in the history of the NBA, both with a comeback, both with the team that he beat, and, and overcoming this city. The, <laughs> An historical import for yeah. the market, for yeah. the city, for the franchise. And I mean, like, it's worth something more than one. Again, there are certain titles that come with folklore. Whether you're baseball, football, or basketball. I mean, you mentioned the Blazers. And to me, this is one of them. Yeah, Blazers in 77. Like, like I can extent, remember Blazers. I have 79. to kind of jog my memory for like 75, 76. 70. Yeah, like the, 77 is the one you Even know. though they've won more Philly than one. Philly in 83. Philly in 83, Right. That's a folk. Mets lore. in 86. Exactly. Right. The, uh, like, the folklore championships Jets in to me 69. Are worse. Yeah. All right, we're wrapping Braves this up. Braves in 95. Oh, Come Braves on. in 95 was just... Not <laughs> that was they had like three Hall of Famers in their I freaking know. rotation. And also, everyone was garbage. <laughs> I tried to pull uh, Jordan Bell over here, but then I got intercepted. Like, Kristen Ledlow and Grant Hill and that whole crew just walked right in front of me. And I'm like, I'm never going to get him now. Right, well, don't worry about it. All right. Th- thank you, Andrew Hahn. Yes. Um, nice man, boy. Thank you. Um, it was a lovely season. It was. And now the, we'll real, now the real season right. starts. We'll Let's go. Free agency. Thanks for listening. True, true, I almost said <laughs> to the Hoop Collective. I'll get it most of these days. Hoop Collective podcast. to believe that baseball season is here as fans we demand a lot from our teams and a new season means not only hope that our teams will do us proud but a renewed drive and commitment by players and coaches to start strong and finish strong goodyear strives to make tires that do the same to go further faster and longer they're inspired by those who put in the work and effort needed to succeed so if you demand superior performances from your team why not do the same for your tires when it comes to choosing tires Choose right at Goodyear.com. Goodyear, more driven.